John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Foxeer Falcor 2. Now, the original Falcor was an exceptionally exciting release because of the beautiful 1200 TV line image. Now, TV lines is a measure of resolution um, and a lot of the FPV cameras in the beginning were 600 TV lines so this is essentially double the resolution of a lot of those and how did it perform well the image was the best that I'd ever seen on an FPV camera but it suffered from some unbelievably high latency issues that's right as you were flying you would get just a tiny bit of lag uh, very, very, very small, but when you're traveling at such a high speed uh, as you do when you're flying a quadcopter, it was somewhat problematic, um, even on a 3-inch, which I initially reviewed the original Falcor on. So, fast forward to the end of 2019, the Falcor 2 has been released. It is essentially the same case that Foxier always uses. Yes, the one made out of paper mache that breaks if you sneeze on it. This camera seems to have some weird tolerances. I could not get it to fit in my smooth operator for some reason. And I just kept shoving it, shoving it, shoving it. It was just like a millimeter too wide. Why? Why? What's up with this box here? So I ended up having to put it in the iFlight nozzle because the camera holders on the side are kind of a flexible TPU. So it was able to just shove it in there. Uh, which was annoying. So I don't know, depending on what type of frame you have, you may have trouble. Maybe my smooth operator is weird. I don't think so though, because I have a Runcam Micro um, Eagle in there. So, I mean, this should fit fine. Um, it's using Foxier's 1.8 lens. Uh, of course, it also has WDR and all that stuff. It takes full voltage. It's four by three. It's NTSC and PAL switchable. It has the single connector in the back. Fox here is notorious for switching the connector on every single release that they put out, which is exceptionally annoying. Fox here, why do you do this? I hate you over this. I'm sorry, but I do. Um, but that said, this camera is the best image of pretty much any FPV camera that I have ever flown. And the latency is resolved. The latency is improved. The latency is better. I flew this. On the iFlight Nazgul, show some pictures. I set up a very rudimentary track, and so that is my best test of latency. One of the things that I found particularly difficult to navigate in, um, in that original Falcor were just some simple gates. Because a lot of freestylers that do tricks, flips, power loops, they tend to learn over time to do those based on timing of your hands and not so much viewing what you're doing. And me, I fly with my eyes telling me when to turn. So the latency affects a pilot like me a lot more. And so uh, by setting up this simple test, I was able to determine that latency is much more improved. It is completely acceptable now. Uh, this is a beautiful image camera, and uh, it's a little bit smaller, as you can see, than the Micro Eagle Pro. And uh, actually, a lot smaller. This is just like a regular size camera lens. Um, and it doesn't stick out quite as much as like the Predator, where the lens sticks out so far. So this is a really, really good option, guys. Um, definitely some improvements that could be made. Please, Foxier, start using the three pin connector again, like everybody else does nowadays. This is super annoying. Um, and uh, yeah, it's finally a safe bet, bet, guys. Finally a safe buy. Oh man. So you'll finally have the luck that you deserve with the Falcor 2. Thanks guys.